You are tuned in to the Bird Walking Podcast, only this show is not about birds. Bird walking is when a conversation flows easily from one topic to another, and your hosts, Natalie and Brandon, discuss topics ranging from Seattle, everyday life, current events, and many more. So let's begin. Bird walking. So the, the topic today is, is basically pop music. Pop, 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 so, yes. what uh, new music have you downloaded recently? I actually love that you asked that because I've only started listening to new music again recently. Uh, and the last one I downloaded was um, by Meg Myers, who is fantastic. And the song is called Jealous Sea. Okay, what kind of music is that? Uh, huh. It's clean and heavy. No, it's, <laughs> <laughs> it's, a, it's a little clean. And, um, I mean, is it... it just generally, is it? Is it what? Is it hip hop? Is it? No, 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 no. It's music? pop. Yeah, it's pop. Um, and I didn't mean to sound like, oh no, it's not hip hop. Uh, and it's it, it, there's a dark tone to it. No, I don't think there's like minor chords or anything. It's just kind of the topic um, is kind of dark. Uh, it's neat. It's yeah. Um, I know. I'm so, so I'm so uh, expansive on my description right. No, totally. Of music. I guess we're your music <clears throat> expert. So, um, so the, the topic today is is basically pop music, and Natalie and I are uh, of a certain age. I'm 48 years old. I'll let Natalie just take on whatever age she needs to be. And I'm not 48. Um, we basically, you know, but we are ch- we're children of the the 80s as far as our our pop music um, intro comes from. So we, you know, we're we definitely have had conversations several times about. Uh, that you know that music really speaks to us and that the music today sucks basically and um so our kind of question to ourselves it does it really is it really as bad as we think or is it just a psychological um, trick that's played on us because of how old we are and how we were raised so i asked myself the same question i one of my more recent purchases was uh kaja bonet um, this kind of she has this sort of crazy kind of eclectic sound like there's little sometimes there's like marching band kind of really? percussion in the background with a lot of kind of Indian and uh, world music influence and stuff like that. Um, but the really sad thing is that I heard it on NPR. Oh no 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 no! Oh sorry, don't make any mistake. I also heard this song See? on All Songs Considered. Yes. See, so that's not that's not hip at all. Well, no, 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 no. But I mean, I don't know if you listen to All Songs Considered as well. But they, because I think that too. I'm like, oh god, this is like, like you know, ultra white Dorkville yet again. Right. But it's not. They have a huge range of music that they introduce on that show. So yeah. I don't really feel bad. Well, about they actually it. did a really amazing uh, introduction of a rock band out of um, the far north, uh, like an Inuit, and they're singing an actual uh, native tongue, really? like Inuit tribe kind of thing. And the music was amazing. Like that's really I almost cool. Almost downloaded it. And it's uh, yeah, it's so you know, totally plug in another show, but. You know, if you guys haven't checked that out and you really like music, I highly recommend it because it is hosted and curated by people who just love music. And that's the end of this episode. Yeah, that's it. (laughs) They're not paying us. Um, Um, So, uh, but so my my thing is, I still there's a whole lot of um, there's probably a lot of new music out there, but I still am definitely hooked on. Um, the good stuff from Bay. Okay, so I'm thinking about pop music and what what in particular do we not like? So I I honestly immediately think of like Drake and um, there's yeah. a <laughs> right. and there's a couple others that because when I was working from home last year I would put like something I knew on YouTube and just let it play and it would eventually get to right. top forty stuff now and you're like eh. but. Let's go back to the 80s, and you think about the top songs. Now, I think the number one song in 1982, I know I know why I know this, actually. But anyway, was Total Eclipse of the Heart. Okay. Still an excellent song. Right. Right? Very right. well made. But Like a Virgin is really boring. It's a dumb song, okay? But it was super popular. But it was supposed to be dumb. R- right. But I'm just saying that, is it that pop music now is dumb? Or if we actually think about the top songs... You know, Billboard charts. A lot of them were just stupid. No, you're absolutely right. So, <laughs> so um, it, Natalie and I both uh, had a weird kind of parallel existence for a while. That when we lived in um, Florissant, Missouri, which is a suburb of St. Louis area, um, at one time or another, we both uh, delivered enrolled papers for a neighbor. 
<laughs> um, and for me, the, this was a couple summers, and what it basically entailed, it wasn't uh, the um, Johnny on the bicycle in, in the Leave it to Beaver era. It was sitting in the back of a van with a little machine that, like, was a, the, would sort of wrap a string around it, cha-chunk, cha-chunk, and you sort of take them out of the thing and roll them, and then, and the, and the side of the van would be open, and you drive through the neighborhood, and you toss these newspapers out of the side of the van, and, and that's what we did for my, my sort of summer job, and it'd be early in the morning. In the morning. <laughs> but then, but then every Saturday, I would go out, and it would be the big load, it'd be the gigantic newspapers, mm-hmm. and, it was me and uh, Gary, our boss, and it'd always be like two other Ram. bro dudes that was on it. Like, and they were usually from one of the other kind of neighborhoods. And those guys were just super, like I said, bro dudes. And they listened. We listened to nothing but either pop music or the rock station at the time. And I remember always Kiss. feeling like this is I the think. stupidest music, and I was always <laughs> out of touch. And it was always Van Halen, mm-hmm. and it was, and I was, you know, and and. Van Halen's pretty good, but like all or um, what like Rat and and oh, God. Uh, and, and um, yeah Pandora Europe and all and, that yeah. Europe, like and all that kind no, of no Pantera Pantera because there's the pizza Pant- place as well and right. I was always confused by that and <laughs> and so and I just I distinctly it is funny like we can laud all our music but the truth is we never I've never liked the the popular stuff right like the stuff that was really going on I always liked the alternative stuff so right. that's, that's and then you have the your key, anthems right? like I actually yeah I would say um, that tonight song I think it's by Fun I, I'm oh, terrible at yeah, band names yeah. yeah so that's an anthem it's right something the whole bar sings or you know karaoke or wherever you are and um, Total Clips of the Heart is as well there's different songs like that and I think they Friends kind in of, Low Places yeah yeah percent um, and like like Thunder Road's a good song but not everybody sings that one everyone sings right. Friends in Low Places yeah right um and if you don't know, those are by the same person is why. I'm we'll let people figure that out. Because <laughs> <laughs> right now, like, younger people are like, who are they talking about? This is stupid. Um, it's no, but, not Chris but, Gaines? But the truth is, actually, what, what I what I kind of feel like is that, and I, and I know it's all cyclical, the 80s are back in and stuff like that, but but I feel like there really, truly, we really never left, like, the 80s in the same way that, that the top 50 songs from the classic rock era from the 70s are still played all the time we sort of pick them and the same thing with the the 80s there's a good hundred songs or something that that everyone knows that have never gone away but like we were saying just before we started um, recording was i don't know that i can name like a whole chunk of like songs from the 90s that are still getting radio play i can the some uh, right and even like even just period can i name that many I, that also has to do with what's going on in your life Except get your freak on <laughs> a little bit ce isn't that a is that 90s or so? i was thinking of nirvana um smells like teen spirit yeah so um that. yeah yeah no that's fair that's true Tori Amos comes up sometimes but she was never like mainstream anyway really you, you know that's well so known, you're but. right so in the in the rock genre or the grunge that stuff is still played all the time. Yeah. Right. It's classic. I guess I'm thinking of the, just, the, yeah. the Justin Justin Timberlake, the but I'm probably just not in tune with that. And that might yeah, that's the thing. The... That's just not our thing necessarily. I mean I love him, but I give nothing about his music. I just do not care, but I actually like him. But um so it could be playing on some radio station right. that I'm not even aware of. Oh I'm sure. Like isn't there a whole station just devoted to the nineties? <laughs> I like that we're like <laughs> Someone, I assume someone's listening. I mean, let's be fair. All the presets in my car are on NPR. All of them? <laughs> no. Just two. No, just one of them, honestly. But, um, but the other, what, there's like five or six, and two of them are talk radio, NPR and the other one. Yeah, we're old. That's part of it. But I need to add, add a little bit to this. I, I was thinking about new music. You mentioned Drake and some of these, some of these guys that are on the radio, guys and gals. And the thing that I've noticed is a lack of ability to sing on an emotional level. Yeah. Like you, you can't, I don't feel like you can, I don't feel like there's an emotional song, really. I mean, there's a couple of good ones that I can think of. There's one, uh, uh, Logic, which is a song about suicide. It's 1-800-something or other. I think that, that was really a heavy song. Um, but the you hear a lot of effect, a lot of um, auto-tune on the vocals, and, and it doesn't sound genuine. It doesn't sound like it's really well... Like It sounds like the person doesn't have a whole lot of talent and the engineers in there just right, you know, yeah, right. messing with their voice, and it's very cut and paste. And so, it, so it sounds generic. And uh, I think that's one of the problems why I don't think nowadays we really have really classic songs. That's... Yeah, so this Meg Meyer song that I was talking about, it's very, it feels very intimate. 
it's not acapella or anything, you know, but it's like you hear her voice clear as day and it is not, you're really sure that's her. And it is very emotional. Okay. And she's just kind of saying the same thing repeatedly, but you feel it. It is like a... So you just <laughs> you, know. you just made me think of something. Bear with me. This is There's a parallel here, but, but I think what you just described is the difference between new movies that use a lot of CGI mm. and mo- movies from back in the day that are probably the same quality, but what makes them so much more real is you know that they... They had to do that in that studio, and they had to build that set, and they had they were there in that environment, and they were acting in that environment, and all that was real. And versus now, you don't know anything about you, anybody can go in and they can make anything happen in the movie screen, including emotions, including resurrecting people that were already dead, or making them younger, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And it doesn't. And if of course there's ones that have done brilliantly, but like if it's not done right, it feels the same way. Like they're all just auto tuned, mm-hmm. and it's entertaining, but it doesn't have any meaning behind it, yeah. right? You are tuned in to the Bird Walking Podcast. Bird Walking. Weird connection, but. Uh... At home, we were talking about how in Orville they don't have uh, transporters. Right. And I think that's awesome because they have to. The transporter in the Star Trek universe is a. It, is is, it, it was always an easy out. Ex Machina? No, no, not sorry, not Ex Machina. Um, it's the the God Machine uh, that they right. use in plays. It's a, yeah, it's an easy out. Yeah. Sorry. No matter what situation it is, they can just transport out of it. Yeah, exactly, and that's not true with Orville, and I really like that. They even I don't know, did you watch the one where the they're on a planet with super heavy gravity? Yeah, with a what's her name, the security engineer. Yeah, right. And, and they had really to go down there to do it, and or the last one I just watched, they were they were um, in prison or whatever, and they couldn't just like beam them out because they have to go get them. But but even more so, what I like what what I like at this great plot point, but what I like about that too is that um, that's the one device on the original Star Trek that all scientists say is not possible at yep, this point. Yeah, so Every I think that's why he did real, that. And, he's like, and they're like, yeah. all science fiction across the board says transported technology is just not logical and not possible. In fact, I've even read whole stories where they uh, the planet tried, tried to figure it out, but it was so incredibly bulky and horrible that it kind of imploded on itself and kind of it was, it's really cool kind of kind of thing. So basically everyone across the board agrees that it's, it's a great fantasy, but it's just... And really, it, it, in the times it has worked, it just ended like the fly. Right. Let's look, Brundle fly. <laughs> okay, so that's off topic, but yeah. <laughs> I mean, let's face it, we're talking about pop music and it's not exactly a deep topic anyway. Um, but so you were talking about, um, so what era did you grow up in or what, what did you come up in as far as like... Music wise. Uh, the 80s and 90s um, because I was, so the 90s hit when I was about 11 or 12 years old and I was, I was into the, in the 80s I was into the stuff you were talking about, rat and and <laughs> Motley Crue and I, I like that stuff. I, and then I got into Poison. rap right about the late 80s so I started hearing the, the whole connection between the Run DMC like and Run Aerosmith DMC and, and, mm, and right? yeah. brought it into, into the forefront for me and then from there it was backtracking all the way into the hip hop so early 90s I got into hip hop. And so from the 90s on, uh, that's what I was into, is the, 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 the rap that was coming out. And I bet, you're, I bet you prefer the rap style from that era as opposed to like today, or the stuff that was like 10 years ago that was like the real rapid, rapid fire stuff, right? Yeah, I like, I like the, the, the boom bap 90s. Um, very simple. Well, ba ba da ba da ba ba da ba da. Yeah. Da, 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 da. <laughs> right. <laughs> you can understand it, and, and you know you can understand what they were saying then too. I mean, at least it's for for the most part. Um, so I, that was my that was my era. right. But then I went to like things like then it went up to like Outcast, where you couldn't even mm-hmm. half you can only catch half of what they're saying because it was just as rapid stuff, but it was great and it was great message and stuff like that. To where now. I, again, I don't even know who it is. It's Kanye and stuff, but it's they're just going bad day, day, bad day. Like they're not, they're saying like two words over and over. Kind of, it's just weird. As like when I actually realized I was listening to a Jay Z's up Jay Z song about a year ago. It's boring. Oh man! And, okay, yeah. and, I, could, and I went home and I was like, Jay Z's boring. And Willie's like, Oh yeah, oh yeah. I was like. How is this a known thing? Like, but he's you know making it's all kinds of money, but boring. it's really boring. It's it's like like musically not interesting. It's not even the lyrics or whatever. It's just musically boring. It was bizarre. Well, like, and then so this his another, wife is way ahead of him in that part. Right? <laughs> yeah. Oh, Jay Z. Oh, yeah. Beyonce. Is it? Isn't he weird looking too? Like for her, I just think I always thought he just it's a weird match. Like she's so 
goddess like, and he's just so kind of potato farmer. <laughs> Well, it's act, like, right? I like that, yeah. <laughs> so, but it, so that brings up an, like another kind of um, theory I have, and it has to do with sort of age and the internet as well. Is that um, it was like rock and roll in the fifties, and then the like um, psychedelic in the sixties, and then in the in the, in the seventies with the you know the funk and the and the eighties, and those we were still discovering new genres of music, and oh, then rap sure. came along in the in late eighties and nineties, and the and then. And I and again, this is maybe because I'm just old, but I kind of feel like part of it is like we just there's no more left to discover. Now it's just remixes of everything. Yeah, that's why I, I feel that way too. I definitely feel that way about it. Um, I've thought about it, and I've even thought as a musician myself, like, can I create something new? Like, what can I do that's new? And I, I find myself running into a wall. Well, like the other day, when, the other day when we were hanging out, you kind of played a couple tracks of yours, which were amazing, and you were probably a little bit taken aback when I'm like, "Oh my god, it sounds like this, this, and this," and you're like, "Oh man!" Uh, no, <laughs> like, I was like, really excited because I, I, I like being different. And, and but I think it's you know. also pretty fresh. Although, again, a lot of my instrumental music comes from NPR, <laughs> so it's a little, you know, what I mean, like uh, intros to shows and stuff. <laughs> so, but but I so maybe there, you know, there's references for sure. But I feel like the stuff you're doing is really fresh as well, you know. So, you know, yeah, there may be references, but I feel like you're putting together in a little bit different way than some other. Yeah, people. and there will always be people to do that. But when it comes to sort of the mainstream stuff, it really does feel like it's all been done like you can't you can you can look at you can look at goth you can look at the, you know because i grew up because when i was halfway through high school we moved to germany so suddenly i was heavily influenced by the new wave and, and kind of goth industrial stuff so the cure depeche mode um susie and the banshees uh, uh you know morrissey ministry all those kind of ones that kind of but uh, even ministry for instance is like rock but it's like industrial rock so yeah. it's the kind of thing but <laughs> it, i can we even what 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 would even be like the latest genre that is was completely new of music that we I kind of think feel like the rock rap of like the two thousands was maybe was like Lip cool. Biscuit and yeah, stuff like that was, was a it was pretty fresh a new kind of yeah mixed kind of things but even then it's it's still rap and it's still rock and it's, it was still been done you know because if you think about how uh, Run DMC came to the forefront with or the Aerosmith. Beastie Boys yeah the Beastie yeah right Boys right and all that. So yeah, it's, it's nothing new. Um, but oh, Nickelback's pretty fresh, right? One of the things I think is <laughs> an issue for the new music is um, I, a friend of mine told me something about a feedback loop that, and I watched it. Uh, it was a like a twenty twenty or something like that, and around the early two thousands, there were, you know there's these groups that are really rebel rousers and stuff like that, like a insane clown posse or something like corn, that. Corn, corn, right? Those kinds of groups, and what what a lot of the media corporate media have, and MTV and all of that have gone in and, and they sort of find out what's new for the kids, what are the kids into, which is sort of rebel. Usually the kids are always going this rebel direction. So yeah. what they do is they find that, they make music that appeals to that crowd, and now all of a sudden it becomes mainstream, mm -hmm. and they're looping this thing. So it's this feedback loop. The, the kids tell the corporates what they like to hear. That gets spewed back out in sort of a generic fashion, until the next trend comes. And so the music is sort of just catered to and pasted together instead of it being genuine. Uh, and then you do have artists who are genuine, but they're, it's harder to get onto the radio. It's harder to get heard. Uh, that music sort of falls into the background against major corporations that are trying to feed this feedback loop to the new generation. But so you, what, what you just described was um, rock and roll in the 50s. Oh, that's for exactly sure. what happened. So we right? yeah. we laud rock and roll as like the original, but that's all that was happening was that there was record producers going and finding the next new thing and pulling them into the studio and making them sing, and then that was the thing that hit, and they'd all do that for a minute, and they'd find the next thing, and it was all all the stuff that we really love until like the Beatles was just manufactured stuff. Not 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 um, Johnny Cash. Or but well, he was, but he was he was also a different kind of thing altogether. Yeah, and he or, was he was know. crossing lines as well. He was doing kind of country and, and the rock Beastie together. Boys. I mean, not Beastie Boys, the, <laughs> the Beach Boys. <laughs> they're, <laughs> they're vampires. That's why they. Uh, but have like, an age. so I mean, I, I it's an interesting. So we're all high and mighty, but like music today sucks. But the truth is, it's kind of always sucked. Right? That, that's, that's what I was trying to say yeah. with the Madonna thing. That's and the thing is, and, and it's not that Madonna is wholly boring, because I don't agree with that. I think uh, Like a Prayer is one of the best songs ever. I will always say that. Um, that song, Music, is also really good. Right. There's something about it. Like, you you got to turn it up. Yeah. Uh, and Vogue is also awesome. But a lot of her stuff is just, 
a lot of her hits are boring. Right. When you, you know, just break when you actually listen to them, you're like, especially, you know, part of the problem, too, is I hear a lot of these songs in karaoke, and you're like, why won't this song end? Like, <laughs> it's even worse when you're trying to sing it. But <laughs> Have you ever um, started a karaoke song, and then, like, when it gets to that, you just put the mic down and leave? <laughs> I thought leave. about it. Man. So, all right. I, I sounds like we're um, about wrapping up on this episode. <laughs> no well, conclusions, but that is that's okay. <laughs> well, you can talk about music for for hours, right? Yeah, and it's. I mean, it, it is a. You know, we have all of us have very very strong feelings. Um, it, it's such a subjective thing. I mean, that's really ours. Others, but to I think it. the conclusion is, in my opinion's right. Yes. So. Bach is awesome. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna go out on a limb. Very controversial. It actually it like yeah. So see, even Bach is boring. Uh, but it's easier to play. <laughs> Little less seriously, like you know, sometimes you get sixteenth notes, but bird walking. <laughs> <laughs>